Momentum. Momentum is a difficult idea to get your head around. However, it is probably best described as how difficult it is to stop something which is moving. I'll give you an example. I, I used to play rugby when I was at school, not by choice, but by force. It was the school sport, everybody played rugby. And I wasn't very big at all good at rugby. So they played me on the wing. The wing in rugby is the place where you run fast and you hope the ball doesn't come to you and you stand around a bit. Um, and I was probably one of the world's worst wingers. I have visions, nightmares of balls spiralling out the sky towards me, of catching it and then getting flattened as people jump on top of you to try to get the ball off you. I hated it. However, there are some people in the world that were better at rugby playing on the wing than I was. One of those guys is named called Jonah, Jonah Lomu. If you Google search him, you will see what he looked like. He was a man mountain, 19 stone, pretty much of pure muscle. Now, 19 stone of pretty much pure muscle running at you is very hard to stop for two reasons. One, there's 19 stone of him. Imagine a very large guy standing here and imagine him running towards me. There's probably not a lot I can do to stop him because he's got a lot of mass and because he'd be travelling quite fast. Jonah Lomu could run 100 metres in 11 seconds. That's almost as fast as Usain Bolt. So, flip side, if I imagine some very, very short person running at me uh, quite slowly, I could stop them quite easily. Momentum, therefore, must be about how hard it is to stop something and it must be about how fast it's moving. And it must be about how massive it is. So if we want to calculate somebody's momentum, we must know its mass and its speed. Multiply them together will tell us exactly how much momentum it has. So Jonah Lomu would have 1,080 kilogram meters per second of momentum. But foam darts, only 0.045 kilogram meters per second. So, is there anything you can do to stop something that has a lot of momentum. Well, yes there is. In order to stop something that's moving, you need to apply a force. So if the bullet from the gun was travelling this way, I'd have to apply a force that way to stop it moving and cancel out its momentum. Small momentum from a bullet from this gun? Small force. Big momentum from a rugby player running at you? Big force. But is there any way we can use the laws of physics to cheat? Small force to stop a rugby player. Well, it turns out there is. And I'm going to try to show you what I mean by showing you a few slow motion videos. I record these videos at two and a half thousand frames per second. It's about a hundred times normal speed. You'll see this tennis ball being thrown towards a table and watch as it collides. Do you see how the tennis ball stretches and compresses and actually makes the collision last a reasonable amount of time? Now, we have slowed this down a lot, but there's still a good fraction of a second there where the tennis ball's in contact. That means that the force the tennis ball feels is actually quite small because the force is spread over a decent amount of time. On the opposite side, if we were to take a steel ball and throw that at the table, you'll see something very different. Watch as it collides with the table and you'll see almost no deformation at all. This means the force the ball must have felt would have been very, very high indeed. As physicists, we like to try to write these things as formulas, specifically here that the change in the momentum is equal to the force times the time of collision. A collision that lasts a long time will necessarily have a lower force. So, we've seen how increasing the time of collision can reduce the force that you need to stop something. I have here a five kilogram lump of steel. If I drop this on the desk, it makes quite a thud. A lot of force there, a lot of momentum. Um, if my hand was underneath that, I would be on my way to A&E right now. Except that if I use just a few layers of bubble wrap to increase the time of collision, it is perfectly possible to drop a very large weight on your hand and feel no pain. Increasing the time of collision will save your life.